They'll switch to Netflix. There's too many internet entertainment options. Um, so I was sitting there like the first time it happened. What can I do? And I looked over at my backpacks of the gear that runs on Speedify. You paid for a year of it. You can use it on any computer or device. So I just pulled out my uh, one of one of several uh, hotspots I have, hooked mm-hmm. it up cranked up speedify and it has never been a problem since we used the speedify software at a command line level uh so it's it's not running a whole ui which is starting to drain resources it's really very very base level um and the really clever people at the bbc got it all working and we're now doing we're now presenting uh whole whole programs every single day of the year have been presented using this technology. Uh, All our weather reports from our our, our weather presenter are done on them. If I look back at my original lives, they are awful. They're terrible. But we all start somewhere and we all get better. And every time you go live and every time you get on camera, you're going to get a little bit more comfortable. You saw far really cool. Nice. <laughs> All right, we are famous. <laughs> you want to say hi to everybody? Now you're on the video. <laughs> so wait, that's the camera right there. Nice. All right. We are going back to look at this guy's house. It has a lot of white lights. There he is. Hey, Christian. <laughs> RGB mixing, so if you want to do each color, you can mix them independently. Within the app, there are a couple features, and I'll just go and show you this. Let's see power. There we go. Woo! Oh my God, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's just building budget aesthetic gaming PCs. And I have my, my studio here now, so we, we've graduated away from the basement of my house and whatnot. Uh, also, I would say streaming kept me from going completely insane when I was in that hotel room for two weeks when I first got to Australia. Uh, so raising awareness is really going to help break that stigma. Uh, we definitely have a stigma in our society where it's you know not okay for folks to be open about their medical conditions. It's kind of seen as shameful. We have, the, all of us have these amazing cameras, Apple, Samsung, Google. We have customers come in all the time who say, oh, I watched this stream and I came in from out of town and I knew we had to stop here. Uh, we build custom PCs for a lot of content creators, uh, gamers, you name it, businesses, colleges, esports. And then I do a lot of thought leadership talking and trying to educate the industry on the value of techifying, as I call it, their events and been doing that for a long time. The first two years of live streaming was actually just myself. I was kind of acting as a community manager. You know what? I never used to think that people wanted to sit, care, cared about what I wanted to say, but now I, I actually, I'm like, you know what? I care. Just, I care, to, Gina. <laughs> you've got to put it out there. You've just got to put it out there and someone will listen. I used to actually be solely mobile. So I used to teach people how to edit using KineMaster, which is just a mobile app. Really, really cool app. And I love the process of both. I love. Uh, the editing process, the scripting process and things like that of recorded videos, but nothing for me also beats the buzz that you get from pressing the go live button.
Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm your host, Alex Kiesis, and this is Speedify Live, the live stream about live streaming. Uh, so today we have a very special guest, uh, Marshall James Cavanaugh. <laughs> Say hi. Hey, how's it going? He is the dream poet for hire. And if you're, uh, if you've been watching the whole time, we've met him before when we were uh, down Baltimore Avenue. He, uh, excuse me, wrote this awesome poem, which we, uh, we framed afterwards. Um, so that, yeah, that was back in June. Uh, <laughs> so he, he's been fa he knows the dream poet for hire. He, he's been on WHYY and the Philadelphia Inquirer, on Fox 29 News. He uh, wrote a book, uh, Traveled by Haiku, about his journal journey. Um, so I think we have a little video clip. Oh, yeah, that sure. They put together. Yeah. Um, so why don't we show the quick clip? So for those of you who, who missed June or whatever, can uh, some, have some idea what he's about. Expected when I started setting up and doing public poetry was that people were actually going to approach me with like their their heavier topics. These are all things that we, as humans, have to deal with. It goes through our heads constantly, and we don't always have someone to like talk to about. And then they find a poet, a way to express these emotions that are sometimes dark, sometimes indiscernible, but through writing you can actually like, expand upon them and relate to other people through them. Everyone is surprised because they're not sure what's going to come out. There's this beautiful unfolding of like, oh wow. That's, that's like something that really meant something. All right, so this is a poem about cheesesteaks. If you want to look me up, I'm on Instagram, at dreampoetforhire. My name's Marshall James Cavanaugh. So cheesesteaks, French roll, slice of meat, a cheese whiz to make the taste complete. With each bite, there are a series of emotions, hype, a feeling to fight, the energy of a champion like Rocky. There's the love, too, oozing and flowing through park of center city into ocean. A gritty texture of all the ingredients that make Philly such a unique zone. Way to go! Woo! <laughs> hey. So that's it. So I took that and that's what I framed here. Yeah. Because <laughs> I love it. I yeah, love it. Cheese sticks, you know, very poetic. <laughs> <laughs> so for everyone out there, we're live. Yeah. Uh, and we can see your comments going by. Um, so, yes, Quiet Galaxy, poetry. <laughs> exactly. That is the, the topic for today. Um, so if you have questions, you have comments, post them underneath. Um, if you're interested at all, mash those like, follow, subscribe buttons wherever you are. Uh, you know, I interview interesting people all the time. Um what is this? What are your Dungeon? thoughts on Bukowski? <laughs> that's a that's a that's starting pretty uh, like right going right for it. Um, I don't know. I I'm not the biggest fan of Bukowski. I, I think he um, he's kind of a brute and uh, got, he's got some scoundrel things to say. But I do love his like self reflection and kind of like. Um, I think he uses poetry uh, as this like like macho facade, which is interesting. But then he like also shows you that he's a butterfly inside, which is like what? <laughs> like this strong man who wants to box with Ernest Hemingway is like also a poet. Like, huh? Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. So yeah, Bukowski is interesting. I think he, he reflects. He does what poetry does. You know, he shows like the the inner human like yeah connects us to our heart let's see i, I think that's got to be job one you got to keep it interesting right? yeah <laughs> um so what got you in well, the comments are coming in fast so i, I was i was playing talk to you for a while and address them but yeah maybe we just got a live audience let's talk to them yeah no, that's um, cool. what got you into doing in real life poetry um, yeah, so I, I've always loved the performance of poetry. So uh, for me, I got really inspired by the beat generation, like Jack Kerouac, uh, Gary Snyder, Allen Ginsberg. 
really love like um, how they made poetry more than just what's on the page and in the book and just like uh, we're all about like the sound of the words and like actually vocalizing it. So I really got into spoken word performance and then doing the typewriter was kind of this thing where I was like, oh, this is another way to like catch people on the fly and, and show them what poetry is. Mo mo I mean, it's like every day what's interesting to me is how many people actually want a poem? You know, it's like you, we're, we're not poets aren't very easy to find and they're not mainstream they're not like the i mean i guess they're getting more uh appreciation as late i think but um i think it's really interesting how everyone loves poetry even if they think like i, I think we're taught in high school not to like poetry but then like <laughs> later on you know you still want to there's love nothing poetry. like a high school teacher telling you how important something is to yeah make, to make it seem stupid right? well, it's the way they teach, <laughs> a lot of teachers teach it too it's like look at the imagery look at the, the foreshadowing and it's like no nah, just what like how does it feel like did, did you like the poem <laughs> like that's all it that should, should matter you know and if you didn't like the poem then try a different poem you know yeah 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 um so quad galaxy is asking do you remember specific poems from people like do you actually memorize Oh, I, I'm, I and or do you just remember them because you're that into poetry? I have a very bad memory for poetry. That's one exercise I really want to work on because I have friends who recite their poems like right off the top of their head, and they have like a store of like you know anywhere from ten to a hundred poems that they can just like quickly rattle off in any situation. I'm like, how do you do that? Um, I do remember the feeling of certain poems I write for people. There's definitely like uh, certain topics that stand out or like certain feelings that I moved through while I was writing the poem that then I like, I often take photos of poems that I like, and then I go back to them later on and kind of reflect and like, you know, I, I, I love the idea of like, um, this, this is a practice, you know, me out in public writing my poems on the street. I'm not necessarily, you know, accomplishing my masterpiece right there and then and there. It's more like I'm, I'm, I'm working through the drafts of like a, a poem that I might be putting together up like over time you know maybe all, over my whole lifetime maybe at one day i will accomplish the perfect love poem you know and that will be it and i'll be done and i'll just be like all right here we go <laughs> time to go home time to take lunch <laughs> yeah yeah uh should we talk about hardware or are you sure yeah so i brought the or, yeah we'll we switch can, we, we've got two cameras yeah. look at this so it's, i got my it's a real writer. smith corona yeah this is uh called a smith corona skywriter uh so this this model was made um to be super light it's only like two and a half pounds and super small. It's like super portable. Um, and I guess, I mean, you can't, I don't know. I guess you can use my hands as like a, a measure. It's, it's pretty tiny. Um, and it, it was designed to fly on airplanes. So you could set it on the tray of your airplane and type do your office work. Uh, so if you imagine like 1960s, uh, you know, airways, uh, they were full of people on typewriters, which is really mind blowing to think about. <laughs> That's like, really like awesome. The sound of that. <laughs> it's a beautiful machine. Yeah, it's seen it's seen its days. I mean, you, you can see the rust on it, but I, I think it has character. This one, um, I think, was like a just like a clerk's typewriter before I got it. I have another one that's the same same model, uh, a little different, and I feel like that one was really interesting because I got it on an estate sale and it was like untouched. Like it was like someone had oh, never really? opened the suitcase uh, that it came in and it was, you know, I guess you have to keep your eye new. open for them because someday, yeah. someday this will wear out. And Yeah, well, so the other that... cool thing is, I mean, this is, this is 70 years old, um, but you know, it, it, it's not the best in the best of shape, but it, it does work really well. And all I have to do is keep it oiled, you know, obviously not throw it around and then also uh, just like dust it off every now and then and do like low maintenance work. And they do they still make the, what do they call the, the tape? Yeah, the, so the, the ribbons, they, the still, ribbons. they yeah, still make that right here. And that's what like puts the ink on the page. Um, and yeah, you can buy them online. There's also, uh, Philadelphia is a, you know, an amazing place. We actually have two typewriter, not just one, two typewriter stores. So you can buy your, um, your ribbons for your typewriter at uh, Philly Typewriter, or the other one is, uh, I think it's uh, WWM Typewriters. It's in Germantown. I forget what exactly the name is, but yeah, Philly Typewriters is down in South Philly. It's pretty nearby where we're sitting right now. Yeah, these things are built to last. Yeah, yeah, not like a, I mean, I've been through probably like 
10 computers in my lifetime at this point, you know, from the first one that I had as like, I mean, I didn't know it was like family computer as a kid. And then to now like the, you know, my MacBook Pro that I'm super proud of, but like this is, this typewriter has last like two lifetimes at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, I mean, there's a sort of perfection to it. Yeah. Right. That yeah. does not exist in a laptop, right? No, it's super. Two, two years later, every laptop, you're like, oh, this stinks next to what's out today. Right? Oh, exactly. So why would you yeah. want why would you want it for 68 more years? Right. Back yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, so, I mean, it, it does what it does. That's nice. And so the paper. Sure. I think you have some, do you have stuff printed on it already? What has the? Oh, so I, I guess you can't really see it, but. Oh, you can see it a little, a little bit. I do like watercolors on the page, and uh, that's just you just, do. You do it by hand. Yeah, with the, with the I, I really like. Um, I don't know if you know the art practice wabi sabi. It's like a like a, a tea practice. The, but, the the Japanese thing about yeah. do, doing repairs and making the repair obvious. Yeah, and like putting some gold on it. It's also about the way the thing the way things are um, is the idea. So you identify like just like the norm the the casual flow of things. So like in this case, like with a typewriter, typos are not accidental. They are perfect. They are That's like right. right where they should be. Um, it's art, man. Yeah. <laughs> and then with with the watercolor, I love just like doing like. I don't know, just unconscious gestures to, to create space for the poem. Because when I write the poems, I like to create word art as well. So, you know, like, instead of just being like, you know, form specific to the page, I like move the words around and they flow in the, the colors. And then you, sometimes there's little images, like sometimes you got little like moons that pop out or like uh, rainbows. And people are like, wow, the poem's about a rainbow and you chose a rainbow page. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> here we go. I, I, I love those little touches. That's, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, it's part of being a dream poet, you know? You gotta add the dreams in there somewhere um, between the lines. <laughs> so how do you get signed up for the events? So is there some website where people who are throwing events? Uh, actually, mostly, so mostly I, I, I perform on the streets. So I busk around the cities, setting up in like public parks and like I sometimes like hop on like street festivals and block parties. And, and then from there, over the years, I've met so many different people that are like, oh, this is a cool idea. I have a party coming up. Uh, would you want to perform? And I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. And then um, I started to create, like, I guess a little bit of a buzz uh, through just, you know, just being, I, I guess, being uh, present and always, like, trying to be everywhere at once. And then, you know, people are really, you know, I, I guess, like, the coolest thing is when people invite me to be... Um, like the their 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 uh, wedding poet, like they're getting married, and then they invite me to be part of their wedding, performing uh, personalized cool. poems for their uh, their guests. And what was really cool about that is sometimes there's people who like got their poem on their first date, and it was like a love poem, and then they like it's like three or four years later, and they're getting married, and they're like, "You are our poet that like introduced us, and like <laughs> we want you at our wedding." And I'm just like, "How? What? How did I, I did that? And, like me? I was just..." I was just hanging out and writing poems. Like that's so cool and like touching and like um That's really cool. Yeah, it's it's very special. It's very like um I don't know, it's unique. It's a unique experience to be like behind the scenes on that and just being like, wow, these poems that I'm like turning out really, you know, affect people in different ways. And that's so cool that like people like fell in love after this poem I wrote. Or like beforehand, but I captured the energy of it. Like, <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. Tried to add to it. That's nice. <laughs> Yeah. So, I'm just thinking about how hard it must be to just churn out poems on demand. I mean, is there a secret to it, or is it just practice, practice, practice? I, I would, I would say, yeah, it's mostly just ten thousand hours practice of writing poems <laughs> and, and trust. Like, I mean, the 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 first the first like thing that you have to break through when you're doing this many poems in person for this many people is the the trust that there there is no bad poem. Like, there's, I mean, even if like someone is like. I hate this poem. Like this was terrible. Like how could you do this? That, that makes them the jerk. Like there's 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 no wrong poem that you can write. And yeah, it got a reaction, right? Yeah, it got a reaction, and it, and maybe it went over their heads, and that that's like more a lesson for the poet. Just like oh, how do I like connect with like people that maybe don't know know these certain things or whatever. Um, also, I I think I think it's just like for me what what. 
how I write is, uh, again, I love the beat generation. Jack Kerouac would say, first thought, best thought. For me, I say, no thought, best thought. Like I try to not to think at all and just see what words come forward. I mean, he really wrote on the road. Yeah. On a roll of paper, right? Yeah, he, yeah. He fed a, a roll of paper into yeah. his typewriter. Yeah. And just wrote the whole book. Yeah, like a scroll, <laughs> and he just it, it was how he uh, st he did stream of con consciousness, just like flow. And I, I I would assume I mean he had journals. I would assume he practiced beforehand to like kind of get it tinker with it to get it all straight before he went for like I'm doing the novel now. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's like you get struck by a muse and then you, you see where the words go. And sometimes the words are, uh, I don't know. They're, they're from another planet maybe because they, they don't necessarily come from me. They come from like somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. What's his name? The, the pretty little trees guy. Uh, uh, Bob Ross. Bob Ross. You can do the same painting three times in a row. Yeah, no, totally. Right? Yeah. And he actually wouldn't bother recording the first time. Yeah. He'd film himself the second and third time he did the painting. And cool. the one that was best was the episode, right? Yeah, cool. So he got to seem super casual. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't that casual. <laughs> um, all right. Um, so your book, should we talk about that? Sure. You, yeah. You got it right here. This nice. One just came out last year. I think I saw you on the, on the news reading a poem, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. Tell us about it. Oh, sure. So this is uh, called Travel by Haiku. Um, you can find it on Amazon or uh, on my website, um, marshalljamescavanaugh.com. And um, yeah, it's a it's a collection of haikus that are uh, written while traveling around the country. Um, and there are like short narrative stories in there as well. Um, and the coolest part of it is uh so yeah again jack kerouac beatniks you know that whole thing um these are the stories in here are three separate road trips that i took across the country with uh three separate groups of friends and all the haikus in here are co-written co so basically we just like pass the notebook around and would just go like round for round uh if you don't know what a haiku is it's japanese style poetry short form um three lines usually it's syllable you play with the civil syllables so it's like five seven five syllables you can also just do whatever you want um because it's i don't know there's so many different ways that people have uh, identified what a haiku is but um yeah so as, as uh people traveling across the country we just had this notebook and passed it around and each person would write a line and then we we'd have a haiku and it, would, it was cool because uh you'd expect it to all be gibberish or just like not nonsensical and not really like i don't know there'd be a wise guy in there who'd you know be really pretty and then all of a sudden someone would be like i'm gonna flip this on a script but no they all came out really good and they also came out with their own voice so it's like through three people writing these haikus we almost created a single like author um and I, I don't know, I think that's really fun. As far as like creating form it, like and getting rid of authorship and like, um, uh, I don't know, just playing with like, what is the collective consciousness? Like, like what's going on? Um, I that's think this really book cool. is really cool. It reminds me of David Burns, uh, how, how music works, right? When, when they mm -hmm. were making um, Once in a Lifetime, right? They, they passed around the recorder and each musician oh, cool. got to add whatever they wanted. And when he gave it to the guitar player, the guitar player did not add guitar. Mm. He played like a xylophone or something. And he said that actually he wanted to fire the guitar player for oh. ruining a song. And everyone else in the band said, you didn't say. Yeah. You made up this process. You told them to add an instrument. You didn't say guitar. You have to keep them. And of course, it turned out to be his biggest hit. Yeah, <laughs> and he realized yeah. afterwards that, you know... Yeah, if amazing. you're unleashing people's creativity, you gotta let them go. Yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so are are the other people? Do they consider themselves poets? Uh, was, yeah. was it three poets on the road, or uh, sort of? I mean, it, it's like I I feel like they're Friends all you roped into writers. <laughs> um, one of them is like we were on a punk rock tour together, so they're in a band of musicians, and um, I was like the traveling poet with them, and um, we performed a bunch of shows. Another group is, was um, a playwright and a video artist that I like um, just traveled up the Rocky Mountains with. Um, 
And yeah, I don't know. I mean, poets in that we all love nature and really love getting lost in the woods together and really find, love to like, just like grounding in and uh, pointing, I don't know. I feel like a poet's job is to like, like just like look at a pretty thing, like like a redwood tree or, or like the sun setting and just be like, hey, Wow. <laughs> like, I don't know. That's just that simple. It's just like, wow, this is cool. And like, make sure that like, we're like noticing those things too. You know? People get stuck in ruts and grinds. Yeah. And they need someone to point out the, yeah. the cool things, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so you also write poetry that's not so spur of the moment. Is that right? Or is all of your stuff kind of improv when you're talking about writing the perfect poem at one point? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's interesting because I, I feel like this has definitely affected my my mode of writing. So I've actually been working on a novel for, for like several years. It's like a travel novel about like traveling through Big Sur in California. There's like love, there's heartbreak, there's um, lots of pretty mountains that the poet has gone, wow. Ooh. Um, and uh, yeah, it's. It, I used to worry that like writing spontaneous poetry for people in the street was going to like affect my ability to be able to actually craft. Because I think there's a definitely a difference. Like that's where, uh, like, what I mean, what happens at home when you're a writer is you, there's a lot of like, well, there's a lot of sitting and not doing anything because you're like, ah, I can't do it. I'm not a good enough writer. But there's also a lot of crafting where you're like. Kind of like outlining and putting things um i guess like yeah you're just turning all the words over and over and over until they like line up in the right way um but this yeah i don't know i feel like this style of writing has helped me kind of like burst through that yeah I, I would i wouldn't have been concerned i think it would yeah. just help you crush writer's block right? yeah exactly that's how it started too like it was it's totally like people are like don't you get writer's block and i'm like no this is the antidote like i've figured out the key to like just get the wheels to keep moving and then like afterwards i can craft things like i can i i, I spill out i set myself on a prompt and i i spill out what i need to spill out in that moment and then afterwards i can you know chop off the edges or or clean it up a little bit um yeah. uh, when i'm at home i i do use a computer so it's uh, there, uh, there's so it's not all old typewriters yeah i feel like the typewriter is a certain kind of writing it's definitely there's a beat to it there's a sound like it's 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 definitely um yeah i don't know i don't know how people wrote novels on these things because like i i just can't get there i think every typewriter has an individual voice too and i i the couple typewriters I have, I cannot, like, I cannot feel the, vo the voice feels poetic. It doesn't feel like a novel. I'm like, how did they write? Like, I mean, it works really well for dialogue, actually. Like, because like people speak in like kind of a choppy way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. And so, so what's better? So that makes things sort of dialogue-like. So, so mm -hmm. the computer, what program do you use to write? I mean, I, I think the different apps and stuff for writing probably have different Oh like, yeah, I word mean, feels very businesslike, right? I just use Word though. You use Word? Yeah, I mean that's. I think I'm just. Uh, I'm a millennial. That's what I grew up with. Like I, they came out like Scrivener when I was in college, and I was like, oh, this looks really cool. Um, but I just kind of use Word. <laughs> it's like I have my own way of organizing everything. So yeah, right. All right. Yeah. Um. So. Are there topics that people are always, when you're out doing the poems, is, is there a most common prompt you get? Yeah, I mean, love. Love is the, you know, it is the quintessential topic that people request. And that's like reassuring. It's like good that a lot of people have love on the moment. Do people put interesting twists to it or do they just ask you to write a poem about love? Sometimes, <laughs> I mean, sometimes I also ask like uh, perhaps, you know, I don't know, like what, what type of love? Like are they, because they could be, just be like love, but the or they could be like romantic love, or they could be thinking about their family and lo that type of love. Um, so sometimes I ask little, little little details. Sometimes I'm just a hippie and I go for like the, the all encompassing like love is all you need. You know, I mean that's like <laughs> it's it's beautiful. Probably what it's, they want anyway. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's like it's like you can see it in people's smiles when they like ask for a poem about love. Um, also, people love travel, like new beginnings. Uh, cats and dogs are surprisingly popular. People love their pets. Like that, right. that's like probably, uh, 
one of the most mind blowing things that I've ever encountered is just like, cause I love my cats. Like I, I get it. I mean, I pretty much use Instagram for two things, yeah. right? L yeah. Looking at pictures of my yeah. dog and following you. It's amazing. <laughs> I should, I should there follow someone else. But yeah. Parkadelphia, the place that watches my dog, you know, yeah. post pictures every day. Yeah, no, it's totally that's awesome. awesome. No, it's so cool. I mean, <laughs> we, these are things that are very important to our existence as humans. So it's fun to try to figure out like original poems for these like dogs and cats that I have never met. Sometimes I get I get to see a photo of them, but you know, usually they're not there right in front of me. Um, so, Luckily, yeah, yeah. I just like think of Call of the Wild and like everybody I, thinks their cat is so unique, but <laughs> well, I don't know. I think my cats are pretty unique. Yeah, you know. No, but my cat's kind of a jerk. That's amazing. I've never yeah. met a cat that's kind of a jerk before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, not really a cat person. <laughs> um, I feel like there's something else I was about to ask you. Uh, oh, well. Um, have you had a problem with writer's block? Speaking of me getting stuck, not knowing what to ask you. <laughs> Sure. I mean, yeah, uh, I think I think the biggest writer's block that I've had is like it's like um, and I think every artist deals with this is like you, it's like you're you standing in front of you doing anything. Um, I, ha I would say it's uh, like one form that it comes in is like imposter syndrome where I'm just like I'm like, what? like why do i get to do what i get to do like who am i to do those things and it's it's kind of a funny uh, i've turned into just like a, a funny conversation where i'm just like i don't know but i i i will still do these things like um and yeah i don't know i mean as far as writing it'll just be like well who would want to ever read what you're writing and the answer to that is like who cares you know i'm not writing necessarily to like become, you know, New York Times next best-selling author. I mean, I, I write just to have fun and like, because that's what what I'm here to do as a human being. Like, that's my purpose is to be a writer. Um, and if like one other person in this world, like finds, you know, like my writing, like interesting or relates to it, that that's enough. I think that's cool. I think that's like what the arts are about is just like creating connection between strangers. Nice. <laughs> Wow, Muhammad says greetings from Morocco. Oh, we so we cool. are worldwide. Oh, that's awesome. Hello. Hey. Good to see you, Muhammad. Um, that's really cool. Ah, social networks. Mm -hmm. So you're on Instagram. Yeah. Is that really it? Are you other places? Uh, you know, I mean, I'm I'm on TikTok and and Facebook. I would say I'm most active on Instagram at Dream Poet for Hire. Um and uh, yeah, I mean, Facebook, you can find me, Marshall James Cavanaugh. Uh, TikTok is also a dream poet for hire. And, cool. Yeah. So we are alive. So, I mean, some of you have noted, if you post comments, we will see them. We will answer. Yeah. Um, That's very cool. Do, do, do. What is the dream oven? Oh, the dream oven. How'd you dig that up? <laughs> That's cool. Wandering through posts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, the dream oven is, um, uh, it's a pump a dream. Well, so it's the origin of dream pump as far as I, 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 my narrative, or I guess like my personal legend goes. Um, it's a house venue that I used to host uh, shows at uh, in 2011 through 2014. Um, a couple different venues eventually, but... The original one had a giant bread oven that we turned into like an altar uh, to dreams, to the dream world. Um, <laughs> and the idea that I've always had with uh, like throwing shows or even like getting into the arts and creating immersive art installations is like the idea of hosting a, what I called like dream exhibitions where um, instead of people, the I guess like we were trying to prompt people to feel like they were dreaming as they went into um what otherwise was very real so it'd be like you know going to a punk show after a while gets kind of like a normal experience and like how do we add some lights and some like some smoke and some like incense and um a bunch of different art pieces and like maybe some like i don't know art type th theatrical performances um so this was in west philadelphia somewhere uh or? this was actually in fishtown uh oh, wow. and uh yeah it was it was like 
Fishtown in East Kensington neighborhood. Um, was also involved in like Little Berlin, which was an art gallery. A mile or, a mile or two north of here. Yeah, yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, and um, no, it was, it was a fun time. I, I hosted a lot of like touring acts from around the world, around the country, around the world. Uh, a lot of local acts from uh, Philly. And um, yeah, just to- just So try. what happened to it? Oh, uh, you know, gentrification. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I, I was, I guess like experiencing a lot of construction in the neighborhood and then, uh, you know, all those jackhammers got a little uh, intense for a while. So I, I went on the road. I went to, and moved to, uh, I lived in Oakland, California for a little bit. And then I lived in New Mexico for about three years before coming back and moving back to Philadelphia. That seems like a good spot for a poet. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was you know, I, I realized like I've been creating all these stories in Philly and it was my time to just like get on the road and like find some some other stories. And um, yeah, it was, it was, it was great. I was traveling for about like four years, like performing poetry, using the typewriter, performing in public places, um, doing like book tours and then, um, yeah, in New Mexico, just like really getting into that that earth um, energy of just like climbing mountains and sitting nice. by rivers. <laughs> so, how much do you collaborate with other po poets? Oh, uh, so yeah, I, I a lot. Um, I feel like yeah, I I'm not the first per poet to say this. I think poetry is a dialogue. Um, so like, I, I feel like when we're writers, we're, we're in dialogue with, you know, writers who are long dead and long gone. And then also writers who are here with us today and just hanging out. And um, in Philly, we have like a really awesome poetry scene. Um, so, you know, I've, I've done in the past, I've done hosted readings and I've like, um, you know, just done the like normal open mic type circuit type thing. Um, and then more recently, I've done this thing called West Philly Community Poem, um, where I bring other typewriter poets out, uh, or other poets out on typewriters, and we write poems for people, and then we also have typewriters set up so people from the neighborhood can add to um, a collective scroll, a la like Jack Kerouac, and, you know, create a, a community poem. Um, nice. So how do we, how do, how do I find out about these things? Because... I mostly post on Instagram. Um, Sometimes I post to my website, but mostly Instagram and yeah, it's like, um, usually, uh, I don't know. It's been a lull cause I've been, it's been summer, but it should be coming up with some things in the fall. So how much work goes into setting up one of these events? And I mean, is it all you? Do you have people who help or you just set up events? I've, I've always events? been a, I don't know, like a generator. I don't I forget what like modality that's from, but yeah, I usually. Even when I'm working with communities, I, I feel like I'm I'm usually, I don't know, I, I'm also comfortable with just like carrying a lot and um, I guess like putting putting things together. I, I've definitely worked in some events like uh, earlier this year, I'd, I was part of an event call, um, called WAP Party. It was put on by Philadelphia Contemporary and like curated by um, uh, Yolanda Wisher and Cynthia Duioka. Um, and they, they were awesome because they were the generators and they carried a lot of weight and they like curated all these different activations. And I got to be just like this type of poet. Um, that one, I actually, I created seed paper. So I created paper that people could like plant in their gardens and it would grow wild, like native oh, wildflowers nice. from, from this area. Um, and the idea being like, let's write some mantras onto these pieces of paper and then we'll watch like the, our poems grow throughout the year. Um, and uh, yeah, it was really cool. And it was cool to just be involved in just creating that project. Um, but at the same time, yeah, I, lo I love, uh, I guess like, you know, the, the biggest thing is like getting a good venue and like, um, yeah, I mean, there's like plenty of bookstores in Philly. Uh, there used to be more like warehouse space and like stuff like that. Um, but uh, yeah. City's refilling, right? Yeah, yeah, everything's turning into luxury lofts. But... <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, I mean, basically for, from 1938 to what, 2014? Yeah. Every year the population of Philadelphia went down. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And, and now it, it started growing again for yeah. the first time in 100 years, right? Yeah. So for all of you tuning in, it looks like we're, we're rapidly heading towards 200 people watching. So... Uh, <laughs> 
Cool. I'm your host, Alex, uh, and we are live with Marshall, also known as the Dream Poet for Hire. Uh, so, like I said, we're live. We're, we're watching the comments and stuff. So if you post comments and things, we'll, uh, we will respond. I like that question. What's it like to do? Which one? Uh, what's it like to do the street poetry of other poets? That's cool. All right. We'll click on yeah. that one. There we go. Yeah. What's it like <laughs> to yeah. do the street poetry with other poems? poems. I, I think this yeah. is a cool question because I, I, so there, there, I, I mean, there's a lot of um, other typewriter poets around the country, around the world. Um, not many, like, uh, like, um, but, but enough, you know, there's like probably, I don't know, in the world, there might be like 500 of us that are active. Um, and there's like a small community of us that connect over like Instagram or like online and different like communities. Um, and it's like interesting to like write poems besides someone else. Cause you get to, sometimes it's really exciting. Like, I, I guess like the biggest thing that's really funny is like people, when they see, see like two typewriter poets set up next to each other, they have this like thing that goes through their head and maybe, Maybe this isn't everywhere, but it's been it's been a lot of places that I've experienced where people think that somehow you the two of you are competing with each other because that's like the normal. So I, I mean, out west, yeah. when I've set up with other, I want to give you both the same prompt and see which one comes yeah, up. Yeah, they do that, prompt. or they or they're like, oh, dueling typewriters, and, and so like I've had to like, or me and other people that I collaborate with had had to come up with like funny ways to like break people out of this like doggy dog mentality and it's like no we're poets like there is no competition here it's all collaboration write a poem about how he sucks <laughs> yeah well no i mean it's all about collaboration it's it's really fun because you get to hear someone else's voice and if someone challenges the two poets to write about the same thing you get two like amazing perspectives that like i mean when you're it's like i feel like at a certain point with poetry, like when I was younger, I had like a healthy competition with some of my friends who were writers where we'd be like, I don't know, we, we'd be like, we wouldn't diss each other, but we would be trying to like outdo each other. And that would be like interesting when it was hard to do. But then at a certain point, you get this healthy like, wow, that person's like brilliant. Like they just like pulled that out of their hat. They like nailed it. And like, yeah. but then like the person who's receiving the poem usually feels the same way about both poems. They're they're always like, I mean, because it's a poem. They're excited. They're happy. It's yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Super Tech Grover asked, not sure if you answered this, but what do you think of button poetry? Oh, cool. Also, what's button poetry? Uh, they're, they're like a YouTube channel that, um, I mean, I think they're active on all social media, but yeah, I think they're pretty cool. I mean, they, they, they like put out a lot of my friends, like, um, Juan, Juan Camilo Garza and like Lindo Yes, um, both have like button poetry videos. I'm sure, I mean, there's like tons of poets who have been featured. I think, I think they, poetry. they're cool. Yeah. And live streaming poetry. So I guess in general, so do you, do you do much live stream? I mean, you do the Instagram, but that's mostly uh, pictures, right? I did, I did like Instagram live during the pandemic and that was like really interesting. And also I, I did a bunch of like Zoom uh li like live streamed readings um during the pandemic it definitely i i there it's cool i mean it's cool that we're here it's like crazy when you're in your room by yourself and you're like at a screen and there's like 40 people watching and you can see them all because it's a zoom conference and they like you you start to know who the other poets are because there will be like one one like little screen uh, where someone just like snaps a little bit and you're like oh thank you so much because it was like on silent but you saw the motions oh, yeah. and you're like oh my god they're another poet they know like i need i i need reaction like it, and the like thumbs up on the on the lower right hand are not enough i need like i need some motion like that I, um this is emotion i need yeah. motion like yeah, yeah yeah um so live streaming is it's i think it was really cool because i would be in readings where people like i mean today we have someone from morocco that's amazing um, I've, I've been in readings where people from all over the world are, are there and we, we couldn't do that before the pandemic or we, I mean, we could, but we didn't know we could do that. Um, but being in the room with people and hearing like, I don't know, at a reading, usually a good reading, you have people like snapping and you have people like silently applauding or you, you even just hear someone like hold their breath or like, 
or like harumph, you know, I don't know. There's these, <laughs> these like little reactions that you hear and that really like changes your performance. So you can feel it and, and it's like- To know that somebody cares. Uh, and that's probably a hint for all of us with our, our Zoom calls, whether, yeah. or not, whether or not there's a poet on it, right? Yeah. You know, the worst is when everyone turns off their camera and mutes themselves and you're talking and at some point, yeah. Like, are they even there anymore? Like, right? I don't know. I, they, I mean, I got used to it, some feedback. but I love being <laughs> in the room. I love, I love feeling the energy. I love, um, yeah, it's just, it's like cool. What happens at readings? Um, and it's cool. What happens here? I mean, it's cool seeing all your comments and just seeing that people are like super interested. I think I'd lose my mind if someone made a positive audible sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's cool though because it's like you know, like it's it's like you write these land lines by yourself in your room, and you're like, "That's a good one. That's a good joke. Ha! They're really gonna love it." And then you re read it out loud and in like a room, and no one does anything, and you're like, "Dang, I need to rework this poem." Or you li you line it up and you land it, and people are just like like laughing under their breath and you feel that and you're like i did it i wrote a good poem like finally <laughs> it feels cool i don't know yeah so you're doing a documentary is that right there's a, a documentary you're are you talking about um like the one following like uh the towns where different poets like grew up in that so, might be it yeah, yeah. It sounds like something we should talk about. Sure, yeah. It's, I mean, it's like a slow burn documentary. Um, I had this idea like early in this year. So, so I, I mean, I, now I feel like I'm, I'm like, I don't know. I didn't mean to come on here and be like a Jack Kerouac fan, like fanboy, but like, uh, it, it was like, it is his like a hundred years since he was born this year. So that's like really cool. And there was like a festival that I went up to during his birthday in March up in Lowell, Massachusetts, that was, um, yeah, it was really fun. Cause it was like, I, I, I had a little bit of a, you know, like, uh, I was like, oh, we're going to get here and it's going to be all these nerds. And then I got there and it was all these nerds like me who were like, I love like reading this literature and we love reading these books. And like, let's go on this like history tour of like all these places where he used to like drink his beers when he was like visiting and stuff like that. And I was like, this is very fun. Cool. Um, so I had this idea to like go to other towns that, uh, you know, poets close to Philly have, have like spent time in. Allen Ginsberg is it, like mm -hmm. born in Patterson, New Jersey. Like, um, you know, I grew up in New Jersey. I I've never really, I've always seen Patterson on the signs, but I've never really thought of going to Patterson. And I was like, what if I go there and I set up the typewriter and write poems for people and ask people about, not necessarily about Allen Ginsberg, but like, what does poetry mean to them? And like, get a, like a story of like, what's going on now in Patterson, New Jersey, who are the poets or who are people, what is poetry in these, in these random places mean? Another uh, poet we chose was Walt Whitman, who actually spent a lot of time in Philly. Uh, the last 40 years of his life were in uh, Camden, New Jersey. So right across the river and um, his 200 year birthday was like a couple years ago. So I knew they, they do like festivals type stuff around his birthday. All right. Marby yeah. asked, did you notice that Alex's office is right next to Alan, to Edgar Allan Poe's house? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it's right there. And I haven't been. <laughs> no, it's cool. It's, it's, I mean, there's, there's I'll actually. I'll pop over at lunch one of these days. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a cool place. I mean, there's, there's a, a cool turf war between like Philadelphia and Baltimore about who can claim Edgar Allan Poe more because he, he supposedly wrote The Raven in, um, uh, in Baltimore, but supposedly spent more of his life in Philadelphia. And so both histor historical societies are like, no, he's our poet. And that's like, kind of cool to like argue over that. Like, <laughs> nice. Um, so the poets are you, you're in the documentary, you're going all over America or sort of sticking around here? Or? Um, more just sticking around here because it, it's, it's easier to here just try really places. Like yeah. And like, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's really interesting to me because like, um, when I was younger and growing up in Philly, I like music brought me to Philly. Like, um, you know, like there's a re really amazing music scene here. They're like punk music, psychedelic rock, like whatever you want, you can, you can find it here. And there's a lot of up and coming bands that get on like a, 
national stage. Um, so like, that's what brought me to Philly. And like, as a writer, I would, I would meet a lot of other musicians. I'd meet a lot of artists, um, wouldn't meet a lot of poets. And I was always like, oh, I, w I wonder, like, actually someone asked about Bukowski earlier. So he has a movie um, about uh, uh, this, the, it's called Barfly. It's about the, these barflies that go to this bar. And, and it's about a bar that he, he found when he lived in Philadelphia, when he was like 24 years old. And it's like just this dive bar, you can go to it. It's in Fairmount. Um, it's a different bar now, but it's like the same, it's the same bar. It's just a different name. And it's like, it, it, I don't know, uh, growing up in Philly, I, I was always like, ah, yeah, it seems like everyone came here and then left. You know, they like, they like, uh, Philly doesn't have its literary people, you know? Uh, I mean, we have a Charles Dickens statue in, in Clark Park, but Charles Dickens is like in England. Like what, are, what is he doing there in Clark Park? <laughs> um, but there actually are these people. I don't know. There, there are these things. There's also, I mean, there's a living scene that's amazing. Um, like, our, check out our poet laureates. You know, it's like, it's like Sonia Sanchez is like alive and well. And I, I don't know. She deserves every documentary done about her. Like, <laughs> nice. Like, you know. So who, who are you reading these days? either online or, or books or yeah or i mean anything, wherever it is well i or do you not have time you i don't know if <laughs> this count it sort of counts it's it's uh, it's actually i mean it's on netflix right now it has to do with dreaming it's uh the sandman like uh, yeah tv series that yeah it is like so good because i read those comics when i was younger and i feel like uh neil gaiman's language for dreams had so much influence on me and a lot of different people I know. And then seeing it like on the screen, like these these characters personified, like um, no spoilers, but it's like Dream is the main character. Dream is the, the the Dream King. The Dream, he's more than a god. He's an eternal that like, yeah, yeah. governs he, he looks dreams. He looks down on the god. He's one level yeah, he looks down gods, on right? the gods. Yeah, and, he, and he, he's personified. So it's, it's really cool. You get these Greek, um, mythos type vibes with like a contemporary universe with uh these personified entities and um yeah i don't know it's been so fun so watching my it. my take on it i yeah. mean i really liked it yeah it's watching neil gaiman become neil gaiman Right. Oh. You watch the episode. In the first episode, he's, <laughs> he's copying H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah. And in the third episode, he's copying Stephen King. Dang. And by the time you reach the end, he's Neil Gaiman and he's not imitating anyone anymore. Now I got to watch and this again. Over, over, over that, that single <laughs> season, no. you see him turn into the guy who goes on to write American really, Gods and stuff. And it feels, I, I would but say. the first it, couple episodes, he's it, just. He's copying other writers' styles. It feels like a mini series, like a bunch of mini series within a series, too. I mean, especially with the bonus episodes at the end, like the cat one. Which I, I haven't like, seen yet, by the way. I watched uh, first 10 that episodes. That one's like Miyazaki. I didn't I'm know. Like, I'm like, so what? I, I haven't seen episode 11. Yeah. Don't spoil it. Um, but yeah, it's funny from from watching that. I actually found a, a, a book of uh, uh, Carl Jung. Um, it was like, inner, I found it in a free book bin, which is the most dreamy magical like box in the world you can just like find it and there's so many in west philly where i live um and there's one i always go to and it always has the best books but they're always like the books of the moment so it's like two days after finishing like the sandman i found like this carl young book on dreams and i was like um it's like interviews so i just started it and it's all on this it's all on these like these like greek philosophies and like these different entities and uh, he gets into other traditions, but it's mostly Western like concepts of, of dream and what, what that means. So have you read Neil Gaiman's American Gods? Oh yeah, yeah. And did you read his notes on how he wrote it? No, I haven't read his notes on he how he wrote it. He flew to America, mm -hmm. he's British, right? and he bought a giant American car, and he drove across America, stopping oh, that's so good. everywhere. That's so and good. And he would, you know, sit there and write about the people he met and stuff and the exact places he visited and the people in the book are the real people he met except he substituted for himself you know odin <laughs> right yeah. thor right he, he, but like the the, cool. the waitresses they talk to are like 
He says the actual waitresses. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> so it's actually an on the road book. That's amazing. It is an on the road book that he, he wrote on the road. Yeah. Just, you know, replacing himself. Fantastically. With, with these magical gods. That's so cool. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. Once you realize that, yeah, it says in some places it's really obvious. You're making like me have to reread The waitresses all these are like the actual waitress. <laughs> that were interesting characters yeah no that's awesome i love that nice um yeah what else anything else you're watching any live any live stuff you watch i mean are you no I, oh, like, I like, say, like like uh, live, like live in, streaming in yeah. yeah in person um I don't know. I've been just going to the beach a lot. I just got back from New Mexico. That was really nice. I was watching like the river flow by. Um, I was out there. Um, just, you know, I don't know. Just just like I used to live there. So I love to visit and just like charge back up. And yeah, hiking up and down these mountains. Um, I don't know. It's it's like nice to get away from the city every now and then. I love being in the city and how easy it is to leave the city. It's like such a beautiful place in that way. All right. Uh, Ryan is asking, favorite music venues in Philly? Oh, cool. Yeah. I mean, I love I love like Johnny Brenda's. That, that yeah. place is just like OG for me. It's um, I think their, their, their food menu changed a little bit recently, which I wasn't. I don't know. It's not as good as I remember, but it, like they have such good shows, and it's always it's not too big, it's not too small, it's like perfect. Like I've seen Sun Ra play in like <laughs> the upstairs yeah. of Johnny Brenda's. How does that many times? Like how does that happen? Like nice, so cool. Yeah, September sixteenth, I'm going to show there. Oh, cool. I'm, blank, I'm blanking on what band it is. Oh yeah, yeah. Some band I hadn't heard of, but sure, sure, I'll go to Johnny Brenda's. <laughs> The coolest show I saw recently was Godspeed You Black Emperor, like at Union oh, Transfer. Nice. That was like, I mean, that was back in oh, the that's, fall. that's pretty much right across the street. Yeah, it's right across the street. But it was like, it was so amazing. They're, they're um, like a chamber rock band with, with like cellos and bass players and violins. And I mean, they were really big uh, when I was in high school and then they were on hiatus for a while and then they reformed a couple of years ago. But this was my first time seeing them and I was just like blown away by how loud they were. They're, they're also awesome because like all of their um, all of their like merch it, it's it's like uh, it, it's it's super DIY and like punk rock and just like photocopied like album covers and stuff and I'm just like this band makes no sense it's so cool I love it it's like the most like classical beautiful sounding things and then they're like there's like these crescendos that happen where you're like wow this is really raw and like hardcore but this is like also on a cello yeah on a cello. yeah yeah i missed the trocadero yeah that was a good venue that was i saw some amazing... ska bands there when i was like in high school that was a wild time i think yeah, i saw yeah. real big fish there or something <laughs> yeah. yeah i think that's where i thought weezer last cool just before it closed um Ryan agrees. Johnny Brenda's is maybe his fave too. That's cool. All right. And all right. We've got people writing poetry. Isn't that it? That's what's going on here. Writing poetry about dream poets. That's all right. cool. All right. Cool. All right. We are here at five o'clock. Believe it or not, it has been an hour already. Um, cool. So what's next for you before we wrap up? Your plans for the rest of the year? Um... <laughs> I got to work on this novel and finish it. That's like the big one. Um, as far as events, I feel like I, I had like a really amazing last sum, uh, end of summer like crush that now I'm like maybe on a break from. Like I, I just performed at the Philadelphia airport um, last Friday and that was like amazing. I've, I've like been dreaming the about airport. like performing poet this type of poetry at the airport for like two years now. And it just like... It came through, and I was like, "Whoa, this is crazy!" Like, so wait, tell, tell us, about, how does performing at an airport work? Uh, so there, there actually is an art department at the airport, and they do a really amazing job. They have murals, and they have like lots of exhibitions that are always on display. Um, and you know, there's a whole team, and they do a great job. And um, 
they do these art activations where they bring in or art demonstrations. They bring in artists, local artists from Philadelphia and just like set them up with this uh, table. And then they just like kind of show what they do or they do interactive stuff. So were um, you just in a terminal and people would walk by and you I type was in the terminal or, and people, or were you reading, were you reading poetry or I was typing the, doing what I do. I was typing poems on any, any word or idea and people were just like um, coming by on, on their layovers mostly, but also people that are like rushing because they had to catch their, catch their flight. And like, it was so cool. Cause it's like, not only was it um, the poem and the, like, what's interesting there, but it was like, where are these people traveling to? I always think about that when I'm in an airport or even on like the highway, like, you know, you're like driving a car and you're like, where is this person, other person driving to? Like, it's so, uh, there, there's a word for that that's really popular right now. Uh, the word is sonder. It's like the idea of, um, looking into someone else's life and wondering what it's like. And um, while you're usually like, while it's like people watching while you're like sitting in a park or something and just like wondering. Right, what, right. It's like a- That's so cool. Yeah. I, I, I'm sure for those people you transformed the day in, into this experience, and right? And those poems and like, like flew across the world. Like it was yeah, yeah. so cool. Like I, there was like someone going to Ireland. There was someone going to the UK. There was like someone going to Canada. I was like, wow this is like amazing like these poems are just for me and i think a lot of people flying has sort of lost its magic right? oh that's the other thing it, too. it used to be this yeah. magical experience and now you go through security and it's, you get jammed in these tiny seats it was supposed to be magic it was crazy in that way for me too where um I, I it was I'm used to that for me as well in the airport but this time i got to just like chill and i was like wow this is kind of fun like Yes, yeah, you're usually you're like, how can I fit all this stuff into my bag and like get through the security and like not have it way too much and I don't know, it's it's like and not miss my flight. Nice. But, um, oh, that's cool. Dude. That's good. Yeah, very inspirational at the airport. Totally agree. Yeah, that's the other thing. It was super inspirational. I mean, like, it's yeah. But Galaxy still loves <laughs> flying. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I'm gonna wear masks. I, I'm wearing yeah. masks from now on airplanes the rest of my life, even if this is yeah. over, right? I mean, it was so hard not to miss. Yeah. Once we start, like, every time you fly, I'd be sick the next day. Yeah. We were supposed to be wearing masks on airplanes the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and this story about how the air circulates and you don't have to worry about it is nonsense. I'm old enough. That I remember flying in the seventies when people were there was a smoking section, <laughs> and it didn't matter where you were on the plane; everyone came out stinking of smoke. That's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's and you crazy. know they claimed, "Oh no, the, there are special air filters over those people." Like, well, then why do I smell smoke? Yeah, but uh, all right, we've we've gone over. That's cool. Um, Thank you so much. Hey, thank you uh, so much for having so me. Links in the comments. Find find him on Instagram. Yeah, I'm usually Dream set up Poet in for Hire. Rittenhouse Square, so you can find me there. Park Park as well on Saturdays. And yeah, uh, Instagram at Dream Poet for Hire. Um, come find me for a poem or we can chat about the Sandman or Oh, wait. Poetry. Are you, people are pointing <laughs> out you, did, you didn't write us a poem. Can we get a poem? Oh, yeah, sure. Well. Please. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Are you good? If you're yeah, good with yeah, it, yeah, I'm good. All about. right, all right. So, <laughs> how how do we do this? Uh, do we make people in the audience throw words out and you pick one, or? Yeah, I guess we could do that. I all mean, right. Real quick, you guys want to throw in comments, give inspiration? Streaming. Okay, streaming. All right, that that's one thing. Yes, yeah, I was already thinking that too. Like I was like, because there. Yeah, there's a lot there. All right, Other I can, I can play with that. All yeah. right, he's gonna play that. Just, right. Should I switch the typewriter? Yeah, 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 let's get. Right. I like this right. view. This is cool. Live action, man. This is so exciting. <laughs> no, it's kind of cool because it's like it's like it's even more uh, live than it would be. It's, it's, 
It's like, usually I just do this in person, but this is like, you know, it's got the whole setup. Yeah. With the camera and. Yeah. Yeah, the sound of the typewriter is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I love it. I think so that's where, where I mean like I find the beat for the poem and the typewriter because you can you can feel it in your fingertips like this lightning of, of sound like emanating. Alright, so it's writing a poem about streaming. Paradox that people at home are on their computers <laughs> watching the screen, yeah. screaming across the internet to my computer where they're watching your typewriter. I love Is it. There... Well, on the ASMR, like people, people actually they make videos of the typewriter ASMR and like just like, yeah, it's a whole thing. It's 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 calming. Nice. Some people have to go to sleep to. The sounds of typewriters. Yeah, analog to digital. I love it too. I think it's such a cool. This dream man. All right. So while he types, I'll just mention a few things coming up. Uh, tomorrow we've got office hours. Going to do some live customer support for Speedify. If anyone uh, has any issues, tell us. We'll. Uh, Get on with you tomorrow. September 1st, we have Subway Sean, who is walking across the country eating nothing but Subway food. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, September 6th, uh, we have Japanese tutor and streamer No Junk Food. Uh, so that's cool. And then on September 13th, we have Irish Kate, the uh, streamer and baker. So it should be fine. Fun. I'm in trouble talking today. <laughs> Quiet Galaxy says, not going to lie. <laughs> I do love that a lot of audio production is still analog. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's kind of crazy the way every, every sound in a movie is fake. Right, that it's all re-recorded -re afterwards. Right, oh. every footstep and stuff—they're just sound people who, yeah, it's pretty wild. <laughs> shoes on the ground, and, and they don't try to use hardly anything from the actual filming. Nice. Now we're both typing. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Text message somebody. <laughs> <laughs> the moment of concentration. Well, it's the ending is always the hardest part. It's like, how do you sum up this whole thing? Yes. 
ですね。Feels like Christmas morning. <笑> All right, here we go. Should we go back to the camera? Yeah, yeah. So here's the poem. Got it all typed up on the、Gosh. spot.、Um, the, the orange squirrel and the way you used it in the, in the layout. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of made, It's art. Made the text fly. And there's like a little rainbow up top. <laughs> all right. So live streaming, because I felt like life is in there. Life is like the river. Flowing from one point to another. This dream made real the flight of what we feel, moving between screens and feeling the stream of ancient reels, scrolls of magic, the philosophies, a hint at what comes to fruition when we aim our attention at the heartbeat, dial up, wireless connection of emotions given fuel, the motion to hold close what we miss in the world's revolution. Hey. Nice. That's awesome. All right. Pink <laughs> Poet for Hire, everybody.、Uh, follow him on Instagram. Find him in Rittenhouse.、Mm-hmm. Um, cool. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. This, This was, was awesome.、Fun. Yeah.、And、all thanks, right. Thanks, y'all, for tuning in. And, and <laughs> thank you to all of you for tuning in.、Uh, and I'll see you all online. Good night.